Ignoring the side chain of lysine, the N-terminal amino group of a polypeptide chain is by far the most nucleophilic nitrogen-containing group in a polypeptide. And we can take advantage of the nucleophilic reactivity of the N-terminus to selectively cleave a polypeptide at the N-terminus and determine its sequence by degrading the N-termini one by one, walking along the polypeptide chain until we get to the other end. The essential idea is to treat the polypeptide with a reagent that attaches to the N-terminus and subsequently reacts with the carbonyl carbon to release the next nitrogen along the backbone as a leaving group, creating a new N-terminus. This also creates a heterocycle which can be isolated to determine the identity of R1, the N-terminal amino acid. Once we do that, we can repeat the process to determine R2, R3, R4, so on and so forth. The reagent used to do this is phenyl isothiocyanate, or PIC. You'll also sometimes see it written as PITC. Structurally, PIC is analogous to carbon dioxide, and the central carbon here is electrophilic as it is in carbon dioxide. The nitrogen and sulfur atoms linked to that central carbon are potential nucleophiles, and with this pattern of nucleophilicity and electrophilicity, we have a pattern that can be used to form bonds to both the electrophilic carbonyl carbon and the nucleophilic amino carbon of the N-terminal amino acid. Within this heterocyclic product, we can see the elements of PIC, which I've highlighted in blue right here. Here's the sulfur atom, central carbon, nitrogen, and phenyl ring. And we can also see the elements of the amino acid, and let's highlight that in red. The entire N-terminal amino acid becomes incorporated into this heterocycle. Two key bonds are formed in this process. There's a bond formed via donation of a pair from the amino nitrogen and the amino acid to the central carbon of PIC. That's formed through a nucleophilic addition process. And there's a bond formed via donation of an electron pair from the nitrogen and PIC back to the carbonyl carbon of the N-terminal amino acid. And that's formed through, ultimately, a nucleophilic acyl substitution process. Note that also that what's missing is this nitrogen, the nitrogen of the next amino acid in the sequence, and that remains incorporated into a shortened polypeptide chain. So notice that now we have a new N-terminal residue with R2 as the amino acid. Residue 2 now hanging off the end of this remaining polypeptide chain. This hints at the idea that we can repeat this sequence of, of reactions with PIC followed by hydrofluoric acid to once again cleave off the N-terminal residue, which is now residue 2, and characterize it. The analysis on the last slide gave us the basic idea that the Edmund degradation generates a heterocycle involving only the N-terminus that can be analyzed to determine the N-terminus and repetitively applied to determine the sequence of a polypeptide. Here I wanted to look at this reaction in a little more mechanistic detail. We won't go through the individual elementary steps, but we'll look at some key intermediates. Phenyl isothiocyanate is electrophilic at its central carbon atom, flanked by nitrogen and sulfur atoms, and really the key first step in the mechanism of formation of this heterocycle is nucleophilic addition of the amino nitrogen to this carbon in PIC. Through something like acid or base catalyzed nucleophilic addition to a polarized pi bond, the nucleophilic amino nitrogen, the terminal amino nitrogen, adds to the electrophilic carbon in PIC. The next stage involves nucleophilic acyl substitution. This initially occurs through nucleophilic action of the sulfur atom which adds to the carbonyl carbon to give, after addition and elimination of the amino group, a structure containing a thioester known as a thiazolinone. This electron flow has done two important things. It's established a bond between sulfur and the carbonyl carbon, and it's resulted in the cleavage of this carbon-nitrogen bond, which releases the remainder of the polypeptide from the N-terminus. Now we have our new N-terminus, and we're ready to repeat the Edmund degradation again to identify the next residue. The thiazolinone is isomeric with this final heterocycle that you see on the product side here, and ultimately what happens to generate this final heterocycle is an isomerization process that's mediated by HF and heat. And this essentially involves opening of the ring and use of nitrogen as a nucleophile toward the carbonyl carbon to reclose the ring. This resulting heterocycle is known as a phenyl thiohydantoin. It's a hydantoin with sulfur replacing oxygen and a phenyl group linked to nitrogen. We'll just call it PTH for short. And the PTH may be analyzed chromatographically or spectroscopically to determine the identity of this R group and thus the identity of the N-terminal residue. To fully complete the sequencing process, we just repeat 
the previous steps, treatment with PIC and HF, until we get to the C-terminal residue, at which point we form one more PTH and there's no material left. So the beauty of the Edmund degradation is that it takes advantage of the unique nucleophilic reactivity of the N-terminal amino group, which is not found anywhere else along the polypeptide backbone. This allows us to capture a molecule like PIC, an electrophilic molecule, with the potential to open the first amide along the polypeptide backbone and release a new N-terminus. Repeated application of PIC and HF allows us to determine the sequence of the polypeptide one by one.